got to talk about this Luna thing, man. It's killing me. I'm getting these text messages that are like, hey, dude, just checking in. Heard about Luna. Hope you're doing all right. I know you're pretty invested. Just hope you're holding up. <laughs> I got people texting me like my like my dog is gone. Yeah, we lost some money. Your boy lost a quarter million dollars in like 72 hours. Took a family vacation. Good dad. Takes two babies on a plane ride. Five and a half hours. Babies crying everywhere. Get off the plane. Think, all right, can't get worse. Turn off airplane mode. Check my phone. UST depegged. And now I'm watching the price. Now I'm, I'm in Hawaii. Should be happy. I'm watching the instability. Like I'm Johnny Depp at the trial looking at Amber Heard. And I just see it go 90 cents. 80 cents, 70 cents, 60 cents, briefly back up to 90 cents, just to give your boy hope and then crash it all the way down. Can I sell? Can I make a trade? No, so, none of that. No, because your boy has good crypto hygiene, keeps everything in cold storage. So when I go on this trip, don't have it with me. <laughs> Can't make a move at all. And now I got to listen to all these people. What really gets me, okay? The, the price crash, we all know about it. Everybody already talks about it. What I want to talk about is all the people that are like, this was an obvious Ponzi. Obviously, this was going to fail. What what was so obvious about this? A Ponzi scheme? If you run Herbalife... Is, is it Herbalife or Herbalife? Is the H silent or not? I need to know right now. Herbalife. Herbalife. I'm going silent H. If you're Herbalife, the reason people don't like that is because Herbalife preys on sort of the, the vulnerable, people who are not sophisticated financial investors, people who don't understand the risk and reward of what they're getting into, right? They're sold a pipe dream, they buy it, and then they're left holding the bag and they got no recourse. That's why people don't like Herb Herbalife. It was a little bit different. The people that, you know, a billion dollars was raised into this company from professional venture capitalists, some of the smartest people in the game. Jump, put money in. Galaxy, put money in. Pantera, Three Arrows Capital, Polychain, Binance, Coinbase. Your boy, some of the smartest and most handsome, like your boy, investors, put money into this project. And the question now is not why did it crash, but why did it go up in the first place? And I got a theory for you. That's why I'm unhinged today. I got a theory, which is that the reason this grew is because crypto is religious. Bitcoin is a religion. Ethereum is a religion. It's like capitalism and religion got together, swipe right, had a baby, and here we go. Bitcoin it has everything a rage of religion has. You've got a mythical creator, check. Sworn enemy in the Fed, check. You got preachers, check. You know, Michael Saylor's out here like the bishop. And it's not just Bitcoin. Ethereum has the same thing. Ethereum, in fact, is started essentially by an altar boy from Bitcoin, right? But Vitalik was 17 years old and he's writing articles for Bitcoin magazine for $4 an article. And he's a part of the church. He's a member of the church of Bitcoin, but Vitalik says it should be more programmable. And so he finds a flaw in the current system. He proposes a solution and he gets kicked out of the church for doing it. So he starts his own and he becomes the new cult leader and he has his own new symbols and preachers and, and there's people that come on board and the early believers of Bitcoin and the early believers of Ethereum all get filthy, filthy rich. And so why do we all jump on the next big thing? It's because we also want to get filthy, filthy rich. If you're out there saying, oh, I believe in Web3 and blockchain technology, you probably want money. You probably want to make money off of buying these tokens. And so let's just be honest about what's going on here. You got people that are always looking for the next big thing, myself included. When we see somebody like Do Kwan enter the scene, you say, oh, wow, this guy's young. He's smart. He's he's hungry. He's got, And he's pointing out an inefficiency of the current system because he says the current cryptocurrencies are not real currency. There's no currency component in most popular cryptocurrencies. The way the current adoption cycle is and where the current regulation is, that's just not possible. If I go into a coffee shop today, I go buy a coffee. Your boy doesn't drink coffee, by the way. Caffeine, don't need it. Still got all that energy. Look at me now. If I go into a coffee shop and I go buy Bitcoin, it's as if I sold a house when I do that transaction, right? Because I got to pay capital gains just for transacting my Bitcoin. And so there's a tax problem for me as the spender. And then the merchant is sitting there being like, what am I supposed to do with this Bitcoin? I don't want it to go up or down 20% in a given day. I'm trying to run a business here. I'm not a hedge fund. It's not a hedge fund with coffee. It's just a coffee shop. So that's why stable coins were supposed to be the shit, man. They were supposed to be the thing because it's going to help you actually do currency-like transactions, right? Peg to a dollar, therefore no capital gains. Peg to a dollar, therefore no volatility. You don't have to be a hedge fund. And so decentralized money, right? A decentralized stable coin was what people were looking for when stable Quan came out and said, I got this idea for Terra. And so he comes out and he invents this thing. You got Luna, you got Terra, Earth, Moon. Am I going to explain how it works? No. Why? Because it's dead now.
because it takes a long time and I'm ranting. And when I'm in the flow, I just want to rant a little bit. It's not about information. If you wanted information, go watch another video. But what you need to know is that it was promised to be a stable coin that would always be pegged to a dollar and had the sister coin Luna that was going to go up in price as adoption increased. And adoption did increase. This shit worked for a little while. He had 3 million Terra wallets created. Do Quan becomes the next cult figure, right? He grows to a million Twitter followers. He renames himself Stable Quan. He starts calling his followers the lunatics. He becomes a billionaire in less than two years. And did I drink the Kool-Aid? Absolutely, I drank the Kool-Aid. I drank that Kool-Aid with two straws because it seemed like this was the next big thing. And people started saying, is this a Ponzi scheme? No, it was not a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi schemes work in a very specific way. They take the money from one customer and they use it to pay out other customers. This was a little bit different. They were taking money from sophisticated investors and using it to subsidize adoption, essentially. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's. They were giving a savings rate of 20% on the anchor protocol and 20% that's unsustainable. Yeah, dude, we know it's unsustainable. We were using it as marketing. That's the message that we got from them. If you're Uber, if you were early in Uber, you took out your app, you push, get a ride, you go across town, you're getting a $9 ride. And you're like, how is this possibly $9? This would normally cost me $34. And the answer was investors were subsidizing the cost in order to get people to actually use the network. So investors were giving you a juicy deal in order for you to start using using the network and to bootstrap adoption of the stablecoin. And it worked for a while. And the reason that we didn't get too worried about it was because Do Kwon did not look like a scammer. I mean, the guy's a computer scientist from Stanford. He's a mild-mannered, smart, and ambitious person that uses big words. He is not what a scammer looks like. We all know what a scammer looks like. Hey, hey, hey. That guy is a Ponzi guy. Be that guy is a scammer guy. That when you see that, you wanna distance yourself from it. What's so what's so what's so what's so what's so what's so Do Quan would never do something like that, right? UST! 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 Should have known. Um and the red flags did emerge. When somebody would question Terra or the viability of the project, he would call them poor or stupid. That was kind of his go-to thing. He didn't just agree to disagree. He would agree to shit on you. And everybody did look poor and stupid if they bet against it because the price went up and up and up. In one year, price of Luna went over 100x from less than a dollar to over $100 per coin. And along the way, Do Quan was getting cocky. He was getting arrogant. When one trader said, look, I don't believe Luna's price is gonna keep going up. I will bet you a million dollars that the price will be lower a year from, from today than it is now. He not only accepted the bet, he raised it to $10 million, wired the money and called the guy stupid. And so here you had smart, thoughtful people raising questions and they were getting basically shit on. And when one user, Freddie Reynolds, showed a step-by-step -step process as to how somebody, if they were motivated, and if they had a billion dollars at their disposal, could completely depeg a $40 billion asset and cause it to crash and profit in the process, he wrote a 15 step process and did Do Kwan look at that and say, man, this guy's pointing out something that's legitimate. Man, maybe we should take this to the team and, and actually discuss this and maybe come up with some solutions or some uh, defenses against this possible vulnerability, this possible black swan scenario. No, he said, and I quote, this is the most R word thing I've read on Twitter. And he dared billionaires to go ahead and try it and try it. They did a few weeks later, May 7th, uh, five, seven, which is short Kings day. And so, you know, just the gall to do this on short Kings day, somebody decided to put so much pressure on UST. They dumped nearly a billion dollars on it, causing the price to depeg down from a dollar to 92 cents. But it didn't stop there. It went 85 cents, 80 cents. And along the way, they're dumping Bitcoin, they're dumping Terra, and people start to panic, right? This became the bank run scenario. People start to panic and withdraw their money. And so the more people that panic, the more the price dropped, which caused more people to panic, and the price kept going lower and lower and lower. And what did Do Kwan do when this was happening? He went basically, to me, I, what I saw was he went through the seven stages of grief. First, he had denial. Then he had anger and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, rumors start to leak from the, the Terra camp that this is Citadel behind it. And what a perfect villain Citadel would have been, right? It's a multi-billion dollar market maker. They're the same guys who stopped the uh, Reddit GameStop attack, right? And so we posted this in the middle crowd. We say, hey, rumors are circulating that it's Citadel behind this. And sure enough, I get an email from Citadel the next day. It says, hey, Sean, I read the newsletter. Um, can you please clarify uh, my statement here? Citadel Securities does not trade stablecoins, including UST. 
And that's perfectly clear. It's a great statement. Uh, well, that's black and white. But, you know, I'm not a journalist, but I had to ask. I said, look, David, this sounds a bit carefully worded. I don't know if I'm just being paranoid here, but maybe you don't trade stable coins, but do you, did you lend money? Did you, were you a market maker? Were you involved in some way? And I, I put, listed like five ways that they could have been involved. I said, could you please clarify? And I thought I laid a trap here. There's no way he can just deny this very open-ended blanket statement. It's going to go to PR and they're going to say, we've made our statement. But a few minutes later, I get a response from David and he says, it wasn't us. You could put that on the record attributed to me if you'd like. And I don't know about you, but if you if you don't speak billionaire, that's billionaire for clarified. D's nuts. It wasn't us. And so I'm getting hit with the D's nuts joke. Luna is just hyper inflating like crazy. Luna goes to Zimbabwe status, and all of a sudden there's you know there's trillions of Luna out there swimming in Luna, bro. Like the price drops to less than a penny, and the trader, you know the guy who bet the ten million dollars against this, he's able because it hyper inflated, he's able to hedge his ten million dollar bet for like seventy two cents. And I'm making jokes, but there's people out there that lost a lot of money. People lost their life savings on this. Some people took their life because they were so sad from this event. So this is a pretty dark situation. It's a black eye for the industry. This is like, this is the biggest blow up we've had yet. And the problem is stable coins are actually a good idea. Maybe algorithmic stable coins aren't a good idea, but stable coins are a good idea. And I think people are gonna throw the baby out with the holy Ponzi water here. What we need, we need dude, like, uh, we need a more stable stable coin. <laughs> we need one that is actually stable. And uh, should we back it with Bitcoin? No. Should we back it with the US dollar that's inflating all the time? No. Should we back it with something whose price has not changed since the day it was invented? But the Costco hot dog combo. If you don't know this, the Costco hot dog combo has been $1.50 for the entire 35 years of its existence. And even though there's inflation, even though costs are rising, the founder of Costco told the CEO if he ever tried to change the price of the Costco hot dog combo from $1.50, he would effing kill him. And so in Web3, they say, oh, code is law. In math, we trust. But there is only one thing more immutable, more unchangeable than code. And that's the habits of an old man. And that is why we need the Costco hot dog combo coin. That is why we need this. There is no NFT. There's no yield. The only utility is being able to walk into any Costco in the country and redeem one token for a quarter pound all beef hot dog with a 20 ounce soda and free refills. Can I get an amen to that? Crypto is religion. And if we fall for this one more time, shame on us. So stay bye-bye to Stable Quan and stay hello to Stable Sean. <laughs>